What is going on everyone? Adam Allard here with Pragmatic Ways and today's video we're going to be continuing on with our clean coding tips series. Uh, today's lesson is really going to be on what's called magic numbers. All right. Now magic numbers are essentially just numbers that are hard-coded directly into the code. They don't really have much meaning behind them or context. It's kind of confusing uh, when you're first trying to read the code and just a quick glance at it to really understand what's happening. I believe uh, Martin Fowler in his refactoring book uh, says it best, you know, um, as we're going through and we see sort of code that we don't really know what's happening, we have to take a couple seconds to really try and like understand what's happening. And then in our heads, in our brains, we sort of figure out, okay, now I see what's going on. But when we're trying to code, when we're trying to refactor and write clean code, we want to transfer that knowledge that we had to just calculate on the fly in our head, and we want to transfer that knowledge from our head into our program. And that's part of this whole magic number refactoring here. It's essentially extracting out these magic numbers and replacing them with symbolic constants. That way, we can easily see what this number is supposed to be representing, uh, by the, the constant's name with a great well-defined variable name instead of just trying to see this uh, quote-unquote magic number here and don't really know what it's supposed to represent. So let's see what this looks like here uh, with a couple examples. I got two different examples here and this first one uh, both these are very simple uh, very simple sample programs just to sort of demonstrate this idea here of extracting out a magic number with a named constant or a named variable. All right, so with this program here, uh, we just have, you know, pounds of apples that we're trying to purchase, and then we want to calculate our total, and we delegate that to a function called calculate apple cost. We pass in how many pounds of apples we want to purchase, and then whatever that does, uh, once it returns, all we're doing is just printing out to the screen. All right, and then this calculate apple cost is what we really want to focus on here because we have two separate numbers here that, again, by just seeing the numbers alone, uh, it's it makes us have to think a tiny bit like, okay, what are these numbers actually representing? Well, this one here is supposed to be the um, uh, cost per pound of apples. And then this one here is supposed to represent the sales tax. Now, hopefully most of you probably were able to assume that already uh, after a couple seconds of looking at it. But again, it's still the fact that you had to take that couple seconds to actually look at this and then try and examine it and like, okay, really think, what is this really doing here? Oh, that's probably what it's doing. Uh, I'm guessing that's what it's doing at least. But we can take out that ambiguity. We can take out that guessing and uh, that extra couple seconds of having to try and think about what it does by, again, just creating some very simple variables here. And we will just say uh, double, I can even make this a final since it's not going to be changing. Final double cost per pound. And that's going to equal the 1.32. And now we can replace this magic number with our new constant. And then right here, we'll also multiply the sales tax. So I'll say final double sales tax. And this is going to equal the 1.075. And now I will replace this magic number with that uh, variable here that is created. And now it's a lot easier to sort of understand what's actually happening. Now we can literally read it and without taking the extra couple seconds to try and think, we can actually, it, you know, reading it tells us exactly what it's doing. We're taking the pounds of apples times the cost per pound and then on top of that add in the sales tax or multiply it with the sales tax. So that's the first example there, you know, very quick and easy example on how to sort of replace magic numbers. Let's look at a little bit more complex example here. And this program's a tiny bit bigger, but uh, still very simple. The idea here is I have a list of integers. It's going to be essentially user's age, uh, a, a list of user's ages, rather. So, you know, the first user is 80 years old, the second user is 26 years old, 22 years old, 2 years old, and then 15 years old. And then we're going to iterate through this list, very simple, and just display the ticket price for each individual user. So we're assuming this is like maybe a movie ticket or into some amusement park or something like that. And we're basically just going to be uh, dynamically displaying the ticket price based on the user's age. So what this function does here is I'm sort of just 
uh, hard coding in the simulation here of is it a holiday or is it not a holiday? And right off the bat, I'm just going to initialize it to false. You know, uh, this would probably calculate based on some day and then bounce that against some calendar of holidays if this was some real world application. But again, just for a quick, simple sample application, I'm just simulating hard coding this in as false right off the bat. But um, either way, what will what this function will do? is it's going to determine, okay, is it a holiday, is it not a holiday? If it is a holiday, then we're going to execute this code, and this is going to display some sort of, um, it's going to display the price per ticket based on the user's age, if they're above 65, else if they're above 18 or above 13, otherwise then they'll display this ticket price instead. Else if it's not a holiday, then we'll go through and run all this code here. Now, a couple things I want to point out. Obviously, for starters, it's very easy to see that there's a lot of duplicate code in here, right? And this video isn't really supposed to be focusing on duplicate code and writing dry and avoiding or uh, writing dry code. But uh, you know, it's always good to brush up on all of our other clean coding tips as well. So, what I'm really going to be trying to do here is first off. Let's let's try and just figure out what this pricing structure really is doing, all right? So we have a certain we can see that the actual structure is the same. Above 65, above 65, above 18, above 18, above 13, above 13, and then else or else. So one thing I don't like about this is, you know, why these age ranges? And not only that, why these age, age ranges, but also what happens if it changes? You know, what if this happens to change to 67? We'll then have to go down here and change this to 67 as well. You know, so again, that goes back to writing uh, the dry code, don't repeat yourself, um, avoiding code duplication as much as possible. So the first thing I'm going to do is replace these magic numbers with uh, some constants here. And what that will do in turn is also help us with a little bit of uh, writing drier code here. All right, so I'll say final int uh, senior citizen price, or senior citizen age, sorry, not price. Senior citizen age equals 65. And then I'm going to just copy this and do it two more times. And this one's going to be adult age, and this one's going to be teenager age, all right? Or I could probably even say like child age or something, but no, I'll say teenager age because this last one's supposed to be the child age, that's right. Okay, so then this uh, adult age is going to be 18, and then the teenager age is supposed to be 13. So now I can replace these magic numbers here with our name constants. And really, I guess these uh, a better way to put this would be minimum senior citizen age and minimum adult age, minimum teenager age. You know, clarity is really king as we're going through all this stuff. Um, this stuff as in refactoring code, making clean code, so on and so forth. All right, so now with that out of the way, uh, let's see what we're doing over here. Once we know what age bracket we're supposed to be going into, how is this price actually to be determined here? So if it's not a holiday, let's start with it not being a holiday. If it's not a holiday, then we're just going to be essentially displaying a normal ticket price. And the pricing structure as a senior citizen will be $5. An adult will be $10. A teenager will be $7.50. And then a child will be $5. So I think I'm just going to extract out these, right? or actually no, sorry. Um, and then let's see what how that compares to the uh, pricing structure if it's a holiday. Well, if we sort of look at this and sort of understand the pattern here, um, each one of our pricing structures is just an extra $2.50 added on top of it. So senior citizen on a holiday, instead of $5, comes to $7.50. Uh, for an adult, instead of $10, comes to $12.50. For a teenager, instead of seven fifty, comes to ten dollars, and then for a child, instead of five, comes to seven fifty. So now, with that out of the way, it makes it a lot easier for us to sort of figure out a way to refactor this and and get rid of all these magic numbers here, and as well again eradicate this duplicate code and really work towards writing drier code here. 
So I'm going to extract out all of these magic numbers into their own named constants here. All right, so because uh, I am going to be changing these ones, I am not going to be making them a constant here. And there's going to be regular, regular variables. So this will be a double, if I know how to spell. There we go. Uh, double senior citizen price equals 5.0. And then I will go ahead and control C, control V that a few times. And now I can, again, just like we've seen before, replace these magic numbers with their actual variables. All right, so now that works out great. Now, how do we get rid of these magic numbers? Well, again, if we look at this code here, this thing's almost an exact copy of this. They are literally the exact same, except that these prices, each price is just an additional $2.50. So really, why do we even have this extra code in the first place? We shouldn't even be doing this. So instead, all we need to do is increment each of these by 250. We just need to add 250 onto each of these. So that's really all I'm going to do if it's the holiday. If it is the holiday, well then just add each of the prices, or just add 250 to each of the prices. And now I don't even need this in the else statement anymore. This can just be on the same level now. Because now this code is going to get run no matter what every single time. And there, that makes it a lot easier actually um, to, to read and understand. Now, if I were truly refactoring this to a, a much cleaner state, I would definitely be reorganizing this. I don't I do not like this function at all because you know, there's just a lot going on in this function, but again, for the sake of this this uh, tutorial here on sort of replacing magic numbers with name consonants, I'm just going to leave this as is. You know, make this a nice short video. Um, actually, there is one more thing I wanted to do here. We can still see that there is four lines of repeated code here. You know, all of these are almost the exact same again. So really, what we should do then is let's delegate this out to its own function. And I'm going to do that here with the extract function method. If I just highlight that and I go to refactor inside of IntelliJ, I can go to extract. Oh, let me try that again. I will go to extract and where is it? Right here, extract method. And this will bring up some window. And what do you want to call it? I will say um, print, uh, what should I say? Uh, print ticket price, I guess. Print ticket price. And I don't want to name that senior citizen price. I'll just say uh, ticket price. And then for the age, yes, I want the age in there. And there we go, refactor. And let's do it to all. And there we go. See how quick and easy and clean that was. And now I removed all that duplicate code. And the program still works exactly how it did before. And it was all... You know, I didn't have to manually do it. I was able to do it with the refactor function with IntelliJ. If you're using um, NetBeans or Eclipse or something, they have very similar features like that as well. So, you know, you should really take the time to learn the ins and outs of your IDE to, you know, just make your life a lot easier. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. You know, I uh, wanted to make, actually, you know, one more thing again, sorry. Um, if it is a holiday price, again, I have this magic number here. Why are we adding why are we doing this magic number here and this duplicate code um, so I'll say uh, double holiday price adjustment equals 2.5 that be, that would be much better and now each price will get added for the holiday price adjustment there we go and again, I'm just really now I'm just starting to put lipstick on the pig here. Um, again, if, if I were to really go through an in-depth refactoring video, I would restructure this a lot differently and sort of have some polymorphism or subclassing type of thing going on in here. Uh, I'd create a separate class for a ticket structure itself and so on and so forth. You know, there's a whole list of things I could do to make this small sample program uh better but again for the sake of this example 
we really just wanted to showcase how to remove magic numbers and replace them with um, named constants and sort of the benefit that that provides you. So I hope you grabbed something useful out of this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Uh, make sure you subscribe and follow along as we provide more content on how to write cleaner code, how to refactor code. You know, we'll learn about design patterns. We'll learn some more Java or uh, do some C++ or Python, maybe, any, maybe some other languages, so on and so forth. Um, if you are not already a member, feel free to join our Facebook group over at the Software Engineering Mastermind group. It is 100% free to join. A link to that will be in the description below. And yeah, you know, until next time, happy coding, everyone.